Good evening to you all. Good evening, Father. Welcome to this Eucharist celebration as we sign ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we are celebrating 28th Sunday of the Ordinary Time. In the Gospel, Jesus or Jesus tells the parable of the wedding feast. In particular, we come across this very verse saying, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? It was a metaphorical language asking us today, how did we get in here without a wedding garment? Our garments are times stained by sins. And our garments are off on, your bo on our body because of the stains of sin. Acknowledge our sins and failures so that we may become worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Oh 
Chapter 25, verses 6 to 10. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from the earth. For the Lord has spoken, it will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord we have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord.
Second reading, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines, chapter 4, verses 12 to 14 and 19 to 20. A, read, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines, brethren, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and my God will supply every need of yours, according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Acclamation. them shamefully and killed them. The king was angry and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned the city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. The play, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For 
many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Many are called, few are chosen. The question is, where do we belong to? Where do we belong to? Are we belong to those who are called or those few are chosen? That's what we are called to answer today. In the liturgy of the world. Perhaps we might find ourselves the other categories that, is, that have been described in the gospel. It reminds me of a story, not a story, when Pope Francis happened to meet his audience, people audience, he happened to share this interesting incident that happened to happened in his life that there was a boy who happened to ask Pope Francis a difficult question ask him what was God doing before God created the world he must have come across this one what did God do before he created the world we know very well the boy knew very well God was very much busy with the world once he created but what was he doing before that Pope Francis was really struggling to answer, gave a thought for a while and replied to the boy saying, God, before creating the world, he was busy with loving. Loving between the three persons of the Trinity, God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They were so much busy with loving one another that that love was not able to contain by itself and that world flowed out of them that caused the world to share God's love with the creation. Pope answered so. He was logical, he was theological, he was reasonable the way he explained yes my dear friends God was so loving that he created the whole world that's why we read in John's gospel God is love and so much so God loved so much the world ultimately he happened to sacrifice his own son for the sake of the ransom for many. When we talk about kingdom of heaven, today's gospel tells us the picture is very much clear as it is described in the first reading in the prophet Isaiah, where everything is fantastic. God is throwing a lavishly huge banquet where the fine wine is served, the best food is scattered. So much so, we read saying that God wipes away all the tears from all faces on the earth. And the people in response say that this is the God we have been waiting for. So much so, he has thrown us a huge banquet. All well. Well, that is very much imaginary. That's what the kingdom of God would like to be. But the problem comes. When Jesus narrated a number of incidents about the kingdom of God, it was not as smooth as as beautiful as described in the first reading today. For the last few Sundays we have been hearing many parables about 
describing the kingdom of God compared two weeks ago the kingdom of God was compared with the parable of two sons where the son who is faithful who did the will of the father becomes the inheritant of the kingdom of God and last Sunday's gospel the parable of the wicked tenants describes how God how God looks for the trustworthy servants to serve in his vineyard and in the gospel several places where Jesus is crying the kingdom of God is like a small mustard seed that grew a big shrub where it sheltered for many or the kingdom of God is like the seed that fell on four different places different fields different lands or the kingdom of God is like a yeast that mixed with the dough that brought newness the whole thing or the kingdom of heaven is like the weed and the wheat growing together we can add on number of parables describing all these parables question us where do we belong to in today's gospel we have the invitation was extended for the wedding feast the first group rejected totally turned blind eyes second time the same invitation was extended again the people those who were invited in fact didn't bother ignored and were busy with their own farm work or business or to an extent to maltreat the servants of the king and we see at the end other group of invitees gathered together from nowhere just brought in kept in the hall among this and we see one happened to be without a garment being identified thrown out where do we belong to are we the people who were invited just never bothered about it are we the people who were invited but went on our own business or are we the people who maltreated the invitation invitation or are we the people might be gathered together from nowhere or are we the people gathered here but without garment most likely we find in the last two category that's the reason it is necessary to examine whether we are just called or to be chosen we might be here for the very incident that we are christians we are called yes we are all of us are called but to be chosen means is a privilege it is a worthiness it is a thing that we truly deserve by our way of life all of us are here because we are called like those people who were called from nowhere from streets and high roads we are all here we are all invited we are called but the question is whether we are on our garments three ways we can examine that we we credit ourselves being as a christians we are first of all christians so we are called we are the church we are members of the church and we read the word of god these are the these are the substantial credits that we add on to ourselves to be called who we are but that not that's not going to be sufficient to be chosen to be chosen we need to go beyond those peripherals that's why jesus says 
We as a Christians, followers of Christ, disciples of Christ, we may embrace the faith. Jesus says, Matthew chapter 16, 24, it is no longer who call me Lord, Lord is going to be in the God's kingdom, but the one who does the will of the Father. And again he says, if you want to follow me, and if you call yourself the disciple of mine, if you call yourself Christians, not only just by name, but take up the cross and follow me. The cross is not just our own daily life cross, even the cross that we face in our style to being a believer, being a Christian. Then we would become those people who are chosen. We read the word of God. We listen to the word of God. In fact, some of us do preach the word of God in our communities. Would that credit us to be the chosen ones? No. We are called to live the word of God. We have to become the living gospel to the world. That's why St. Paul said, in Galatians chapter 2, 20, it is no longer who I will live, Christ who lives in me. Because the Christ who is incarnated the word, became man, is the word that we receive and we read, has to live in us just as much as it lived in Paul's life. And he was able to say that statement, it is no longer I will live, it is Christ who lives in me. We need to be so in order to be chosen one, not just to be called, read the gospel, reading the Bible. We, we claim the credit that we are the church, since Vatican II, rightly so, we, the members of the church, truly called the church. St. Teresa of Avila said it, church has nobody than our own mouths and foot and hands. In fact, Christ uses us and we are the church. We become so. Would not stop there. In order to be chosen, not just to be called, we need to personify Christ in us. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 we read, your bodies are temple of the living Holy Spirit. Our bodies are the temples where the Spirit lives. And Jesus, when he was going, being ascended into heaven, he said, I am sending an advocate, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, to live with you, to guide you. And that Holy Spirit we have received. But the question is whether we become the living temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, my dear friends, let us not leave just being called. Let us become those who have been chosen. Let us make ourselves another Christ. Let us become the living gospel to the world. Let us become the temple of the Holy Spirit so that we may put on that wedding garment to participate, to deserve, to be worthy at the wedding feast. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
to God from God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to a marriage feast to which those invited make excuses for not attending. On his subsequent attempts, many come, but one man enters the banquet hall without the required wedding garment, which is an indication of utter negligence and carelessness from the man's part. He is thrust, is thrust out from the banquet, that we may prove ourselves worthy to be admitted to God's presence. Our response, Lord, admit us to your presence. Lord, admit us to your presence. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that they may become messengers of the kingdom of God and its values, we pray, Lord, admit us to your presence. For all Christians, that as the chosen people of God, they may respond to God's call and fulfill the responsibilities stemming from that call. We pray, Lord, Lord admit us to your presence. For those who refuse God's invitation to be part of his kingdom, that they may receive the grace to recognize the Father's love for them and come to experience true conversion and reconciliation. We pray, Lord, Lord admit, admit us to your presence. For the civil society, that it may care for the poor sections of society, making available education for their children, food for the family, and medicine for the sick at affordable cost. We pray, Lord, Lord admit, admit us to your, your presence. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that enlightened by the word of God, we may not take our life of faith for granted, but by doing our duties, we may make ourselves worthy to be invited to the heavenly banquet awaiting us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord admit us. us to your presence. Please pray for your personal intentions and the intentions of our parish. God our Father, like the people who have refused to go to the wedding feast and abuse the servants of the King, we too at times thrust aside your invitations. Grant us the grace that we may not come to your banquet unprepared so as not to be thrust aside. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for offering all things for the church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. I, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was sent in he took the chalice and giving his thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your son grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed virgin mary mother of god blessed joseph her spouse with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for and pray in heart may this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray o lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant francis apu and tumabala our bishop the order of bishops all the clergy the religious and the entire people you have gained for your own Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion O merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom we bestow on the world all that is good through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever
Jesus our Savior taught his disciples to pray to the Father. Let us have the courage to say the same prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. He who invites us, not just to be called, but to be chosen. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh, my. 
We pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated for the announcements. Church announcements. Today is the 28th Sunday of the Ordinary Time. Feast for this week. 13th, as usual, we celebrate here in our parish, Our Lady of Lourdes of Fatima. And we will have Holy Mass at the Grotto at 5.45 p.m. 15th is a memory of St. Teresa of Child... 15th is a memory of St. Teresa of Jesus. 16th is a memory of St. Margaret Mary Alke. And 17th is a memory of St. Ignatius of Antioch. Next Sunday we celebrate uh, Mission Sunday and we will have no canteen this year because of the lockdown. But we request each and every family to collect the Mission Sunday cover that are kept behind and bring it next Sunday with your contribution for the Mission countries. You can also make online payments for the Mission Sunday. The details are put in the notice board. Part of our duty is to show that we were missionaries, mission country, and now we are able to send people to other mission, mission countries as missionaries. So it is our duty to support this particular cause. The money will be sent to Rome and from there it will be sent for the animations of mission countries. We are reciting the Holy Rosary every day at 5.45 p.m. followed by Mass. Please pray the Rosary at home and seek the blessing of our Blessed Mother. You can also take the statue of Our Lady to your home and have a rosary service and get your home and family blessed through our Blessed Mother's intercession. We continue streaming masses online in Facebook and YouTube. Last Sunday's collection was Rs. 6,535 and the parish community thanks you for your support. May God bless you. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. May you all have a wonderful evening. Now let us stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the solemn blessings. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness 
and pour out saving wisdom upon you. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. We have the following birthdays today Nitya, tomorrow R. Rajaya, B. J. Sheila, K. Karthik Reddy. Terence Bernard, Maria Rani, 13th R. Ravi Shankar, 14th Mary Jacinta Karthik, Sister Alfonsa, 15th John Raja, Mary Alfonsa, Lizzie Jos, Nishika, 16th Elizabeth Rani, Dipti Sudha, M. George Nirmal, Kevin Joseph, 17th Paul Benedicta, Rosemary E. Kirtana, Sister Joseph Mary. Wedding anniversaries for this week. On 12th, we have Rajaya and Jacinta. 14th, Jaya Sham and Vashanta. 16th, Jaya Prashant and Usha Maxima. We pray for them and we ask God to bless them and grant them all that they need as we sing. with me. 